Let's talk about amino acids in A-level chemistry. So let's start with the basics. What is an amino acid? An amino acid has got an amine group and a carboxylic acid group. And it is, of course, a biological mo molecule. So any of you that are also doing A-level biology, or even if you did triple science for GCSE, you'll be familiar with our amino acids. So we start with our central carbon atom, and then attached to that carbon atom, there is going to be, as discussed, a carboxyl group for our carboxylic acid, our amine group as the amino part, and then on this central carbon, sometimes called the alpha carbon, correct me if I'm wrong, you will have a hydrogen and you will have an R group. And it's this R group that's what's going to change from one amino acid to the next. Now, luckily, well, thankfully, in your A-levels, you will get a data booklet that shows you the structures of a few key amino acids. So they'll have the R group in there for you and they'll just say, look in your data booklet and talk about this particular amino acid. Now, if we look at this carbon in the middle, we can see that there are four different groups attached to that carbon, which means that this carbon is going to be chiral. Okay, because we've got four different groups attached. This, of course, means that we are going to have optical isomerism, or these are going to exist as enantiomers. So we'll have non-superimposable mirror images. Again, that's going to be the case for most amino acids because there is an amino acid that, again, you'll see in your data booklet, which is glycine, where R is actually hydrogen. And if the R is hydrogen, let's just show you super quickly, then we would no longer have four different groups attached to that carbon because these two are the same. So if it's glycine, not optically active, but if the R group is not the same as any of these other three, then of course we are going to have our optical isomerism. Now, within our amino acid, we have got, as discussed before, an amine group and an acid group. So our acid group, no, no surprises, is going to act as an acid. And our amine group, which we know from our amines topic, is going to act as a base. And because we've got an acid and a base within the same um, molecule, Typically, these are not going to exist like this. They're going to exist as a Zwitter ion, where our acid group has been deprotonated, so lost this H+, and our base group is going to be protonated, so has gained an H+. So I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of this. Okay, bye-bye. So, as our Zwitter ion... Instead of COOH, we're going to have COO minus, so deprotonated. And then for our amine group, that's now going to be NH3 plus. Okay, now as a general definition, Zwitter ions have got charges, so a molecule with a positive and a negative charge, but the key with a Zwitter ion and a really common mistake that students make, a Zwitter ion must have no net or no overall charge. So the charges have to add up to zero. So we've got one plus and one minus. Even though there are charges within the molecule, there's no net charge. So positive and negative within the molecule, but no net charge of, well, no net charge overall. Same, same, same difference. So. This is how our amino acid is typically going to exist, so as our Zwitter ion, but depending on the pH that um, the amino acid is in, that's going to affect our acidic and our basic groups differently. So if we were in acidic condition, so let's add H+, then our acid group is going to be protonated, as is our amine group. So in acidic conditions, we will have this structure here. 
here, okay? Common types of exam questions that you'll see, they might say, draw the structure of this particular amino acid at pH, I don't know, two. And then you know, okay, pH two, that's an acidic pH. Therefore, my acid group is not going to be deprotonated because we're in acid and our base group, the amine group is going to be protonated. Going the other way, if we were to have our amino acid in alkaline conditions, so let's say we added OH minus, or in a question, it might be worded as where the pH is, I don't know, 12, then our amine group is not going to be protonated. I hope you can still see that. So it's just NH2. But our carboxyl group is going to be deprotonated. So it's going to be O minus. OK, so look out for whether they've asked you in acidic conditions, protonate your base or basic conditions, deprotonate your acid. Now, when these amino acids come together, they give us peptides and that actually links with our proteins topic and that deserves a video all to itself. So make sure that you are following, make sure that you have liked this video and comment with any questions or any suggestions for future videos.